Welcome back, everybody, to the Dev Marketer channel. We are doing part number 10, episode 10 of our advanced CMS series. And we've been working on a lot of front end stuff for a while, so I am super excited to tell you we're diving back into the back end. And if I had my pick, I actually really enjoy doing the back end a heck of a lot more than the front end. The front end um, is rewarding in its own right, but um, I really just prefer teaching some of this back end stuff, working with Laravel, working with the PHP, and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm actually excited to be able to get off the front end for a while and get into some of the back end. Now, today, First of all, you'll notice I still don't have my camera. In the last video, I promised I had ordered it, and I thought I had ordered the USB hub so I can get the camera working. But as it turned out, I actually put it into my cart on Amazon, never actually checked out. Didn't realize that until last night when it was Prime Day, um, Amazon Prime Day, when you get like, it's kind of like Black Friday, all the big deals. Um, anyway, I was going through all of them, found a few things I wanted to buy for Prime Day, I added them to my cart, went to check out. It was a little more than I expected. I was like, wonder why that is. And then I went and looked and I realized, oh, I never actually ordered the USB hub. It's still sitting in my cart from before. So I went ahead and just checked out with that. So now that got ordered yesterday and hopefully it should be here by tomorrow. So hopefully the next video, maybe, maybe not, depends on whether I film another video today or whether it's tomorrow. But anyway, sometime very, very soon we'll have that camera back. So you won't have my sexy mug shot right now, I apologize, but you guys, I'm sure we'll get over it. And um, we're just gonna dive in and have some fun coding today. So today we're gonna be working on a very popular topic. Everyone wants to know about authentication, authorization, all that great jazz. And that's what we're gonna be working on with our project today. So um, over here in Laravel, I'm over here in the Laravel docs. And if we take a look at those, I just wanted to talk to you guys real quick about just notif notifying you guys basically that there is authentication in Laravel. You guys are familiar with this. We've used it a lot. It comes with forget my password functionality. It's got an API authentication built in. We've got uh, middleware and everything. Authentication is basically what manages logging users in, logging them out, f resetting their password, managing the sessions. That's authentication. And I, a lot of people get this confused, but that's what we call authentication. And then there's now another aspect to this called authorization, which is different. And authorization is managing things like permissions. So now you're not just managing like the users logging in and logging out, managing their passwords and sessions. Now you're saying, we're gonna authorize this user to do a certain task. So if you want to have users that are allowed to create blog posts, you could, um, you would give them the permission to create blog posts. You generally write it as a gate or a policy. Policies are a little bit better, but gates um, seem to be more common for some reason. Um, probably like policies a little bit better because policies actually tie to your models. And uh, anyway, we don't need to get into this right now, but um, policies in general tend to be a little easier. So you could say this user is is authorized to create a blog post, right? They could, but maybe they cannot delete a blog post. Maybe only say an admin user or whatever could delete a blog post. So you basically have these permissions, you tie them to users, and then users would have the ability to do certain tasks. So users can't, you know, certain users can't do certain things, but can do others and vice versa. And so you basically give users these abilities to, you know, perform certain tasks. You are going to, um, you know, set up the task, the gate, the policy, whatever it is, the permission, and then you're gonna assign it to users. Um, and that's basically authorization in a nutshell. So Laravel provides that functionality out of the box. The thing is Laravel actually only provides um, the actual like managing of the gates and the policies. It doesn't actually like manage things like roles and permissions, like saving those to databases and stuff like that. That's something you have to roll your own. You have to do that yourself. Okay, so I have done this myself and it's actually really not that bad. And in the future, I'll probably do a video just showing you how you can do it yourself because for certain scenarios, especially small web projects, just rolling it your own is really kind of a good thing. But we're doing a big project here and I want to have a lot of additional functionality and I don't really wanna write it from scratch because there's already a lot of people that have done a lot of the hard work for us. So why write it again? Um, they've already done a lot of great stuff and they maintain great packages. So I wanna show you guys some of the other packages that, w that are out there and then what we will be using today and then we're gonna go set it up. So the first one I wanna mention is Laravel Permission. Now Laravel Permission is actually a really nice one. This is uh, built by Spady, if you guys are familiar with him. He has a lot of Laravel packages and this basically allows you to do things like this. Give permission to 
edit articles. So this allows you to basically save permissions to users and it is all built on the back end of what we see here. So it still uses these gates and policies ultimately, but it allows us to basically save permissions with certain users, which is something that this doesn't have out of the box. So um, this basically gives it that functionality that you're looking for while using the back end that's our, uh, the API that's already built into Laravel. And that's kind of why I like this Laravel permissions is it's kind of like a lightweight overhead that sits on Laravel that gives it some of the functionality that you're most likely going to build anyway. And it works really, really good. So I would take a look at this one. We will not be using this one today because I actually, um, there are a couple other ones I like a little bit more to provide a little bit more functionality, but they are bigger packages. So that's kind of the pros and cons. I have used this and it works really, really good. And so the, I just want to notify you guys that this exists. Now, another one that a lot of people use is Entrust. And Entrust is popular just because it's been around for a long time. And so this provides a ton of additional functionality that basically sits, you know, it almost replaces the built-in author, authorization, but um, yeah, it, it's good. The problem with it is that it's not maintained. Um, you can see here there's 43 pull requests. And if you look through all of these, like they go all the way back to like two and a half years ago. I mean, this was, you know, like over two years ago, two and a half years ago. And these, and then it just goes from there. Like people are trying to maintain it. It just, this thing has fallen into disarray. If you look at this, there's 311 open issues, only 254 closed. So there's more open issues than closed issues. And this is always concerning when you see this. So I really wouldn't recommend getting started with interest because it's not being maintained. So some smart individual took interest and forked it quite a while ago. Um, about a year ago, they forked this and then kind of started maintaining it. So they got frustrated with that the interest was not getting maintained. So then they forked it and then built Lara Trust. And Lara Trust is being maintained very, very well. I highly recommend this. This is what we will be using today. Um, this handles roles and permissions in your Laravel applications, so we can actually set up roles, which are things like an admin role, maybe an author role, an editor role, or whatever, and then roles will have certain permissions that they are allowed to have. So, for example, we would have an admin has the ability to do anything. Maybe an author can write, can edit their own posts or create their own posts, but cannot publish them or something like that but an editor could publish them or something like that. So that is basically what we will be building today and we will be working with this Lara Trust plugin. I really like this. It's really well maintained. They've added a lot of new functionality to this. It's a really, really good plugin. I can't recommend it enough. That's what we're gonna do today. So let's go ahead and dive into this package. I wanted to give you guys kind of the background of why, kind of how I got to this, why I'm choosing this plugin because a lot of people always ask, why use in trust? Why not use this one? And so forth. And so that's why we're using Lara Trust. But these are, I would recommend either Lara Trust or Laravel Permission to get this functionality because they're both really good options. I was almost doing Laravel Permission and I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to use Lara Trust. Um, I always get concerned when you're using a really big package because you never know how well it's being maintained. But this one's being maintained really well. I've been keeping an eye on it for um, over a year now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, if you go ahead and take a look at their docs, here are their documentation. We're gonna go through and set this up in our application. Now, we're just gonna basically configure this, get it set up on the back end, and then in the next video, we will set up like the UI where we manage users and do all that kind of stuff and give them roles and all that stuff. So that'll be the next video, um, but we're just gonna kind of focus on getting this set up on the back end, doing maybe seeding our database, getting our database set up and all that stuff. So to do this, let's go ahead and let's, um, uh, let's go ahead and open up our project. So we're going to get in there. Um, CD, let's do dev marketer, and then we're going to open that up. Okay, so first thing we need to do to get this running is we need to require the package. So let's go ahead and get this running. Uh, this is pretty easy to do. Make sure you do run the require so it actually gets thrown into the com uh, composer.json file instead of just you know installed locally one time. And let's go ahead and let this run. Okay, so that's been done. That actually took a, quite a while. I don't know why, but that took a while for me. So now that we got that done, the next step is basically to install this like you would with many other packages. Um, we're basically going to add the service provider and we're going to add the facade. So let's go ahead and do that. 
I should note that look at they've already added notes for Laravel 5.5, which I think is awesome. That shows you how well this is being maintained. And when they were this plugin was I think started at 5.3, and I followed their um, upgrade from 5.3 to 5.4, and they already had this configured for 5.4 before it was released to the public. And that's why I like this plugin is it really is well maintained. Um, for those that don't know, Laravel 5.5 is going to have the ability where we don't have to write all this crap every single time you're actually going to be able to, um, it's just going to run it basically automatically. So when you ru run Composer, you install the package, it's going to, um, we're gonna be able to add the service providers and the aliases and stuff like that without having to do it manually. So that's kind of a cool st thing that's coming in Laravel 5.5, which should be released actually in the next week or so of this video coming out. So we will do our, you know, normal videos, giving you guys all the feed, you know, all the new features that'll come soon. Okay, so let's see, what were we doing? We were getting into our app, we were adding our service provider. So down here, let's see, we haven't added any service providers yet. So what I like to do in a project is I always kind of like to separate my service providers that I've added with um, from the other ones, just so I know. So I'm gonna say third party service providers and this just helps me keep it um just keep track of you know we've got the ones that came with laravel there's this this uh the package that's installed these are the application ones and then now here are mine the one that i've added personally so there we go we're going to add lara trust and then now we need to add the um uh, the alias so we're going to call this lara trust just add it down here I, I like to keep these in alphabetical order so Lara Trust would go right here, and that should be good. Now we're gonna go ahead and publish the configuration file. Okay, so that copied the file, so now we should, in our config file, we have two new files that we can use for configuration of this project. Now the other thing we want to do here before we actually go and configure the, the config file is um, while I've got this page open, I just want to go ahead and add this middleware to our kernel. So this is so we can have access to this role permission and ability middleware um, that we're obviously going to want. So let's go ahead and do that. Go into our kernel here and then we're going to add our middleware. Okay, down here at the route middleware, let's just go ahead and add it at the bottom. Clean it up like that. Okay, so basically we already have access to these route middleware and now we're going to have role, permission, and ability. That's basically what we're saying. So now we'll have act, we'll be able to basically use middleware based on certain abilities, which is um, certain permissions or certain roles. Okay, so that'll be great. And now that we got all that done, that's kind of this basic setup. Let's take a look at the Lara Trust and go through this that we want to use. First of all, um, we're not going to be using a morph map. Um, I don't know. How, so the morph map is if, because these are polymorphic relationships that we're going to set up, um, you can use a morph map if you want to basically override um, the the class name that is used in the polymorphic relationship. This is complicated, but it's not that complicated. But if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. We're not going to use it. We're not going to use this Teams feature. This is an ability that Layer Trust has where you can basically group users into Teams and then give Teams certain permissions. So that's a Teams feature. We're not going to worry about that. But if you wanted to configure that, you could. There's It's all in the docs. So we're going to keep that at faults. The users model, if you had multiple user models, we would um, basically define the additional user model here or rename them. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to have a default users model, and that's it. Leave it the same. Now, we've got our, um, these are the models that define, there's basically three things that we are we generally have, but we're actually only using two of them. You're going to have to have a model that defines your roles because we're going to define and store roles in the database. A role is something like admin, editor. Um, subscriber, things like that. These are groups of permissions. And then you're going to have obviously your permissions. So you're going to be adding and saving permissions into the database. So we need a model for both of these. And we're just making sure if you wanted to override what they're called, you could override those here. So we're just going to stick with the default. So we'll have role and permission. We haven't created them yet, but we're just going to stick with that and we'll call them role and permission. Um, we're not using teams, so we don't need to worry about that. But if you were, then you would need to have a team. Uh, model. Okay, next tables. Okay, so we'll have a roles table. If you want to override the name that you want to use for people in other languages, maybe you might override these, but um, this is where you would do it. But we're just going to stick with the default. So roles, permissions, 
Um, we're not using Teams, so we don't need to worry about that. And then we've got the pivot tables, role user, permission user, and permission role. These are three pivot tables for the many-to-many -many relationships. Once again, we're just gonna follow these standards. And then foreign keys, we're gonna follow the same standards, user ID, role ID, permission ID. We're not using Teams. These are for your foreign keys for defining the relationships. And then middleware, um, the basically handling, this is how, what, how do you wanna handle if uh, someone, basically if an exception is thrown, if someone's not allowed to access something. Um, I like using the abort because the abort basically, versus a redirect, because the, the abort isn't going to um, re redirect them to another page. So it's not gonna change the URL or anything. It's going to, um, like on the URL that they're on, they'll basically get a 403 error, which a 403, for those that don't know, is a permission not granted. It's kind of like a standard across the internet. So I prefer using abort. Um, redirect though, is if you had a page that was like, maybe you just, wanted to redirect everybody to a certain page because you didn't want them to know that that page exists or something, you could redirect them back home or you could redirect them to like a, you do not have permission to do this, like a, a creative page or something like that. But most people are gonna wanna use abort. And then 403, if you wanted to send them to a 404 or 401 or something like that, you could do that. But 403 is kind of the standard again because 403 stand is a HTTP code for um, permission not granted. So that's basically everything. Oh, if you wanted to use, this is complicated. This is in the docs if you want to understand it, but we'll be using KBob case. So we actually don't need to customize anything. So um, yeah, that's basically it. So we can also seed our database. We're going to come back to this in a second. But before we do that, let's go ahead and run our migrations. So we actually have several migrations in our, in our database here. If we go to migrations, oh, we don't have migrate our migrations yet. We got to actually run those. I forgot about that. But we do have our users table and our password resets table. These are the defaults that come with Laravel because we did the scaffolding back in like episode three or four. Now, before I run the migrations, let's go ahead and get those Laravel tr or Lara Trust migrations built in here and then customize those and run the migrations, get our database set up. So in order to do that, we go back to the terminal. We're going to, did I not go to the terminal? Um, we're going to run PHP artisan Lara Trust migration. Okay, there we go. This kind of tells you what it's going to create. So it's going to create uh, migrations for these tables, permission role, permission user, permissions, role user, blah, blah, blah. So we'll take a look at these when we get there. Um, do we want to proceed as with this? We do, obviously. So we go and run it. Okay, so now we should be good. Let's go back to our project and you can see we now have a new migration. So inside of here, this is all gonna follow the defaults that were already in this layer trust config. So we don't really need to do anything, but I just wanna show you guys. So we've got roles. This is creating a roles table then, and the roles table is what's gonna store our actual roles. So like our admin, our editor, and those type of roles, it's gonna store all those. You can see it has an ID, has a name, has a display name and a description. So we're gonna go through, we'll create a UI to basically set up new roles. And that's gonna be kind of the idea. Um, okay, great. So then we've got permissions. Permissions are gonna be like, like a permission like you would expect. So it's like um, create posts, edit posts, delete posts, those types of things. Those will be, each of these will be a permission. And then we're gonna group permissions into roles and that's kind of the idea. Now, so permissions is just gonna be storing the permissions directly in the database and then roles is just roles, but then you need to create this relationship because permissions belong to roles. So that's where you need to define these. So, and then roles belong to users and that's what we do here. So now we're linking users to roles saying that like maybe I'm an admin. So this defines a, a user has that role that we're looking for. And then, and this is a polymorphic relationship. And then we've got a uh, users have certain permissions, polymorphic relationship and then permissions belong to certain roles, polymorphic relationship, okay? So we got a lot of these going on. And then when we run down, we just delete these. So that's basically what's going on. We don't need to do anything actually, that was kind of nice. Let's go ahead and run the migration though. So PHP Artisan um, migrate, almost did some Ruby stuff there. Run, what is it, run migrate? It's been a, it's been a long time since I've done some Rails. Um, okay, great, so we created all those. Should have it in our database now. 
there we go. So now we've got all these different things. We've got our normal password resets and users, and then we've got all of our roles, role users, lots of this stuff. A lot of these are pivot tables. Okay, so now that we got that set up, we need to create models. So let's go ahead and create some models. We had to create the role model, and then we had to create the permission model, and we already have a user model. We don't need to worry about that, but we will need to configure it a little bit. And if we were doing teams, you would set that up, but we're not going to do that. So let's go ahead and make some uh, roles. Okay, let's go ahead and run the exact same thing, but this time we're going to uh, create a permission. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this permission, run that one. Okay, that should be good. So now we've got our new, our two new models here. Okay, so we come into here into uh, the role model, but instead of actually importing the model, what we're going to do is we're going to say use Lara Trust um, slash Lara Trust role. Lara Trust 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 <laughs> role. There we go. Okay, so what this is going to do is this is a special model that's been created for the role type, so that's going to automatically. Um, override the it's going to inherit the model as well so this comes from our package okay so that's what we needed to, to do right there and then instead of model we want to extend Lara trust role there we go okay that should be good so now that we got that let's go ahead and do the same thing for permission so with permission we are going to um, do the exact same thing we're going to use Lara trust Lara trust um, permission. Okay, and then we're going to extend Lara trust permission. Why could I not hit that stupid U today? Lara trust permission. Okay, and that's basically it. So now our roles, our uh, models are set up, I should say. Now let's go through. We need to configure our user. So with user, um, we just want to. Okay, and then here what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a trait. So we're going to do Lara Trust traits, Lara Trust user trait, like that. Okay, so then when we have that, all we need to do is we're going to say um, up here. We're already using notifiable. We're just going to use another trait called Lara Trust tr uh, user trait. Like that. Okay, so now this is going to inherit all the cool functionality that you would expect, like has role, um, all that different stuff, sync roles, things like that. All right, so now um, that's everything we need for our models. Now, before we continue on, we want to dump uh, composer dump auto load. So let's do that. Composer composer dump auto load. There we go. That's just going to refresh all this stuff with the models. Okay, so now we, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and seed the database. And this is going to basically fill up some default like user and authentication roles that we have. So to do that, what we need to do is first of all generate the seeder. We have the configuration for the seeder here, but we don't actually have the seeding file yet. And then we're going to link the seeding file to the main seeder and then um, we can configure it. So. Let's do that from our terminal. All right, so to go ahead and run it, we're gonna do a PHP artisan uh, Lara Trust seed, er, seeder, seeder, there we go. That's gonna uh, create the seeder. And then you'll see the seeders down here, we can look in that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and link up the, um, so we actually call it from the normal database seeder. So inside of here, what we're gonna do is, um, we're just going to call the Lara Trust Cedar. There we go. So we're calling this Cedar class, and that should be it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now this um, Cedar is going to go ahead and generate some basic stuff for us just to get started. And we can actually see what it, it actually generates stuff based on what's in this configuration file, Lara Trust underscore Cedar. And so from here, basically, we have our role structure. This creates user roles. There's three created, super administrator, administrator, and user. And then these are the permissions that we're giving them. So we're giving them access to users to be able to create, read, update, or delete users. ACL is like managing user permissions. And so that we allow them to manage user permissions with you know, create, read, update, and delete them. 
for profile, they just need to be able to read and update their profile and so forth. Administrators see they don't have access to ACL at all, but they have the normal CRUD functions for users and read update for profile. Users only have access to their profile. Um, and then this is if you want to set up um, a user basically that has specific permissions but doesn't fall into a role. So we don't need to worry about that. So we're just gonna leave that empty. Let's go ahead and delete that. By the way, the C-R-U-D obviously stands for create, read, update, delete, and it maps them down here. So if you wanted to change this again for other languages and stuff, if you wanted C to stand for something else, then um, you could change it here. And then when it actually creates it, what it's gonna do, it's going to create a permission. So for the C here, it's gonna create a permission called create-users and then read-users and update-users. That's kind of what it's gonna create. Okay, so now that we got all that done, let's go through, and I want to show you guys if, in our browser here, um, wordpress.org has a permission system I think that works really, really well. So I'm looking here at the roles, I'll link this down in the description, um, and these are the roles that WordPress provides, and I think this is a pretty good starting point for me to go ahead and do kind of the similar thing. So you've obviously got your super admin, this is the user that created the site, they have access to network administration features, all the stuff, basically everything with a few additions that you don't want to give out to anybody. Then you've got the administrator who has access to basically everything in the in the website. Then you've got your editor who can publish and manage all posts. So in my case it would be posts, courses, things like that. So I could have someone be an editor and they would have access to all that but maybe not, not change like um, the administrative stuff like being able to create new users or something like that. But they have access to all the other stuff to manage you know, um, you know the other stuff. And then we've got our author. This is someone who can manage and publish their own posts. A contributor is someone who can write their own posts, but they cannot publish them. So if we wanted to have a contributor system where people could write blog posts or articles, they could basically manage them, save them, edit them, do stuff like that. But it would have to be a editor or hire that could actually publish their posts for them, okay? So this allows someone you give access to from just publishing wildly onto your website. And then subscriber would be just basically someone who can manage their profile and settings and stuff like that. Um, that would be like a normal user who doesn't necessarily contribute or manage the blog or the website. So I'm actually gonna start with this same layout. Super admin, admin, editor, author, contributor, and subscriber. I really like it, I think it worked well for them and it's gonna do the same thing for us. So we've got super administrator, we've got administrator. Let's now make an editor. And then let's go through and make a um, author. And then we're gonna do a contributor and then a subscriber. And you know what, I'm gonna make another one called supporter. Because I want uh, people, I want to be able to create a system where people could support the blog, and they'll have additional feed uh, permissions that subscribers don't have. So subscribers would be basically someone who's just has a, a membership on the site. You could call this member maybe instead of subscriber. We'll just call it subscriber though. Okay, so there we go. So that's good. Now I'm the permissions are a little weak right now, but I also haven't created a lot of other controllers and stuff yet. So I'm actually just kind of leave it like it is right now. Um, this is good enough for now. We'll be configuring this and working on this more down the road. So let's go ahead and save this Lair Trust Cedar. Then let's go back to our terminal to run the Cedar. Now before you run the Cedar, make sure you dump auto load again. Auto load. Okay, so let's um, optimize those auto load files and then we can run the seeder. So to do this, we'll do php artisan db seed like that. It's gonna run it all, perfect. You can kind of read through what it did here. See, so it created an update for users, delete for users, all this is for super admins and so forth, okay? All right, now we're looking at the database here. Um, we can see that we've created users. It created a user for every single type so this is just kind of the way it is by default. We probably don't want to normally do this when we go live, but it's okay for now. And then it's got roles. So these are our different roles. We're obviously going to want to customize this, but we'll do that when we get to the UI, when we create the UI for this to manage this better. Um, then we got roles for users. So we can see that the, use, the first user, the super admin, has the role of one, which is the super admin role. So you can kind of see how that works. 
This is pretty straightforward just because of the way the cedar works. Normally this will be a little harder to read in the in real life. Okay, and then permissions. So these are the different permissions that have been created. So you can see here that we have like the create users. So everyone that has this permission can create users. Um, like for example, everyone's gonna have access to this read profile and this update profile. So these allow you to basically read your profile, update your profile, but not do manage or create users, okay? And then these permissions are then tied to the users through the roles. So these are all the permissions. They're tied to roles. So you can see the first role here, the super admin role, has access to one through 10, all of these um, permissions. The second role, which is the admin role, has access through one through four, and then skips all the ACL permissions and then has access to nine and 10. And then you can see as it goes on. So all these other ones basically just have access to nine and 10, which is the up or read and update their profile, right? So that's kind of the way that works. And password resets the same, users are the same, everything like that. If you wanted to assign a specific per permission just to a user that, that not inside of a role, that would go in here, but we didn't do that. Okay, so that basically sums up the configuration for our, multi for our um, roles and permissions system. Now the next thing we want to do, and this will be continuing on in the next video where we start this, is where we actually want to create a user interface where we can view different users, um, you know, manage the users, and then assign different roles to them through a user interface. That's the better way to manage this, um, especially as your project gets bigger. So that's what we're going to be creating in the next video. we got to create a little bit of user interface for that, some front end stuff so that we can do that, and then we're going to tie it into the back end to actually manage all these programmatically. So make sure to jump into the next video. That part's going to be pretty cool. I'll see you guys there. Mm -hmm.